ate my dad's boo-boo as a child because he didn't flush and I was curious. So my dad is secretly gay. I found out about this when one night he was talking on the phone with his secret lover. <laughs> And welcome back to my channel. So today, 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 I am here with a special guest. Introduce yourself. Hey, hey, baby. Hey, baby. My name is Martin. My real name is Faber. <laughs> So I actually asked you guys to send me your biggest confessions and questions that you wanted advice on. So I had an email and y'all sent me hella confessions. Yeah. A little too much. I'm seeing things like, sorry, I don't have any tea, but all I can say is that you're hot. <laughs> <laughs> I also see my sisters duct tape me to a chair when I was six or seven just because they didn't want me to see what color, <laughs> what flavor Kool-Aid they were making. What the hell? What is going on? This is just a little sneak peek into some of the stuff that people have been sending me. So today we're gonna just be reading them, reacting to them, and then also answering any questions that they have, okay? Yeah. Before we get into this video, if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for coming. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for being a reason. Let's calm it down. Mm. Okay, wait, that was actually really bad. <laughs> Don't do that again. You don't know what a Reezy is. Reezy's are the best people on the internet. And when you are the best, you will have haters. Like this hater right here. Subscribe and become a Reezy today. It is the best thing that's gonna probably ever happen to your life. Period. You know what? <laughs> I should stand on that one. Yeah, period. Reezy. Oh, the only way you can become a Reezy is if you hit the subscribe button so you know what to do. Click that button. Click the button, babes. So my dad is secretly gay. I found out about this when one night he was talking on the phone with his secret lover. <laughs> my mom does not know and my dad doesn't know that I know. Do I tell him I know or do I tell my mom? I, I, I don't know, I what, don't to know do. what to I actually don't know how to help. And that's actually a difficult situation. That is. We've never been through that. Personally, I think I would tell the mom. Really? Yeah. Because at this point, it's like, yeah, you have a secret lover and yeah, you're gay, but like you're cheating on my mom. Yeah, oh my God. Imagine the mom finds out. I'm telling my mom. And not, not only the fact that you're cheating, you're cheating with the man. With the man. And she thinks you're straight. I would feel worse if I talk to you about it and we're yeah. keeping this little secret and my mom is out of the loop. Baby, I'm a rock for my mama. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. I'm a rock for my mama. I'm a rock for my mama. I feel like this is a very hard situation because if I tell my mom, I feel like I'm gonna ruin my family. But I'd rather ruin it for a good reason. I don't know, I feel like this is a hard situation, but I also feel like you should do what's right in your heart. But well, we are rooting for you. When I was a kid, I'll sneak out my room at night to eat everything that was in the fridge and drink soda. The one night I went to the kitchen and opened the fridge, I saw this red soda that I loved, so I decided to drink it. I opened it and took a cup full of it. I drank it and it was disgusting and so thick and so nasty, so I put it back in the fridge and went to sleep. The next day, I told my parents that the soda was expired. And by the way, I had to confess drinking it at 2 a.m. They looked at the bottle and my mom was choked and my dad laughed. Then they told me it was a bottle of pig blood that they were planning on using to make a traditional dish for my island so i drank a cup full of pig blood baby i'm so sorry no! i'm so sorry i don't even know what to say to this they set you up they, set they know what up. they were doing and when, what cup wait there's a lot the, to unpack there's a lot to unpack because why did they put it in the bottle exactly that looks like soda. They, they set, set you up. up. Like, I think I'm gonna fight my parents. <laughs> What's up? Are you trying to kill me? Don't, I don't know what I just read. I read it by accident and now I, I don't even want to read it. Viewer discretion advised. <laughs> I ate my dad's boo boo. <laughs> As a child, because he didn't flush and I was curious. Did you continue eating dog shit? I don't think I've ever had that type of curiosity. I've never. Because it stinks. And it, it came stinks. out of my body. It came out of <laughs> You didn't even eat your own. You mm -hmm. ate another human's boo-boo. <laughs> you actually consumed another person's hoo-hoo. That's, that's wild. Stay away from me. Please, stay away from me. Because if I invite you to my house, what if you go in the bathroom <laughs> after you're digging in the toilet and you're flushing it and you're digging and trying to eat it? Stay away. No, that's scary. Oh my God. Okay, so the subject is a lot. This is what the subject says. Turns out one of my friends planned on I don't 
think I can talk about this, actually. Yeah. I think you may need to go to the police about this one. And, and not to Court Reezy's channel, please. And after, maybe therapy. I have a piss kink, and I'm not even kidding, dude. It's not like I had it for a long time. It developed over the past month. That's how quick this shit can happen. Stay safe, y'all. No, I don't like that image in my head. I don't like that image either. Um, you may need therapy as well. What? Oh my I gotta go. I gotta go. You what? What is going on? You what? Is everything okay? Look, let's read it. I don't want to even hear it. I once put up fairy lights. Do y'all know what fairy lights look like? I once put fairy lights up my vajayjay. Mm. It felt weird and nice, you know. It felt satisfying. But the bad thing about it is that I had to go to the hospital because my mom saw me doing it and interrupted me. Your mom? Your mom? Your mom saved the day. God placed your mom she right there. <laughs> God put your mom right there. God told your mom to enter the bedroom. You don't know what it could have happened if she didn't walk in that Everything room. happens for a reason. Once I was in school, reminder, I was in seventh grade, my teacher was reading a book that had the N-word in it. Then he said, right class, I will say a word that is in the book for educational purposes. They always say that. That's One of my that. teachers was in the news for saying the N-word. Mm -hmm. In the news? Mm-hmm. Like, what? what? Mm-hmm, yeah. So why did she say that? Because they were talking about the Confederate flag and talking about how it's rooted in racism. And then she was saying how, like, I guess black people still say the N-word. And then she just said, so is the N-word. What? I have the video. Can I include it in the video? Yeah. The bro. exclusive T. Yeah, wow. that was my school. <laughs> Today's racist of the day, in my opinion, is a high school teacher from South Carolina who equates the N-word to a flag. understand how an educator a professional can say that word in a room where you know black people are present or matter of fact even just students in general kids the teacher is believed to be sarah mckellen from cane bay high school where olivia is from she states that the teacher was made to give an apology but she didn't seem as though she wanted to this is a breaking story and something that is still continuing so i will give you updates as i have them and if you're watching can i say something about it if you're still here i know you hated me in school you knew the teacher person yes every time i would walk down I'm like hi blah 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 and she would just be like oh oh no, oh, you? oh oh she meant I'm the n-word when she said it i know you and i will remember you yeah you thought since you, i was a black kid mm -hmm. you can do this you can just say the n-word you didn't have to say so it's nigga that is racist <laughs> <laughs> I was fully embodying that a racist giving, white woman. Was, yeah, I was giving Karen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then he actually said the N-word and everyone was shocked. And I started shouting at the teacher and people started backing me up. Then the head teacher was called and I got suspended. You got suspended? That's wild. Wait, why did you suspended? Why did you get suspended? The teacher said that wait, hold on. I guess because he said that it's for educational purposes. Oh my god. Oh my lord. I I can't. Child TV commercials always contain hot children. Am I wrong? You know what you are? A predator. You need to go to jail too. No, is the fact that they're looking for validation saying, am I wrong? Yes! <laughs> you need to go to jail. You need to be handcuffed. <laughs> you need to be handcuffed. I once had a poop so large that I almost had to get surgery for it. It was literally the size of a baby. And I had been holding it in for almost three weeks. <laughs> Girl, what the How do you hold poop? I can't even hold poop for two minutes. It's I'm nice. so sorry that you even had surgery. I feel like I would take that to the grave. No, it needs to be like they need to make a documentary. Yeah, that. the because that's surgery to remove poop. <laughs> wow. So I'm a college student, but I still live with my mom, and this woman is something to say the least. Mm -hmm. Anyways, whenever I'm mad at her, I do this thing that I like to call microdosing on gaslighting. You're scared. Microdosing? Microdosing? Wait. Basically, when she's talking to me, I'll pick a spot on her face, like her chin and forehead, and I'll just really focus in. I look at that one spot intently. Oh my god, you're what? evil. You may be evil. You're out for blood. Maybe add some theatrics to it, like squint and lean in a little. 
Wait. No. Uh, then eventually she will get so uncomfortable and ask me what I'm looking at. And without looking, I tell her it's nothing. Eventually she will run to find a mirror, only to find out that there isn't anything on her face. But she's thinking there has to be something, right? Why was she looking at me like that? Then she comes back and asks me again what I was looking at. And I tell her I wasn't looking at her weird. She's imagining it. There's literally nothing on her face to look at, lol. That oh is like manipulating. Evil. Yeah. You're ma oh my god, the power of a person That's can change. Uh, oh my god. I would not want to be friends with you. I cause, wouldn't. Because what if you're angry at me one day and you start doing that? Anyways, yeah, she sucks. The trick is to do it just spaced out enough so that they don't catch on. Fun trick to use when you're talking to someone you hate. Expose this person. This is... This is... Wait, this, I mean... This is actually rude. No, it, it's, it's rude. It's, it's horrible. But I mean, technically, if you really don't like someone, it's like... Mm. Now, if it's somebody like me, I'll probably be like... Yeah, I would be like, oh my god, why? Because I hate when I'm talking to someone and they're looking too closely at things on my face. Like, what are yes. you looking at? One time I threw scissors in my sister's eye. Time, <laughs> time passed and her eyes started to get lazy and go in different directions. And she had to get surgery no one else knows but me. So what did y'all tell your parents? If this, depending on when this happened. And why would your sister not snitch? Bruh, if you threw scissors at my eye, the whole world is gonna know you did it. No, if I'm you threw scissors at my eye, I don't care how blurry my vision is, I'm gonna bop you in your head. <laughs> I'm literally fighting. How do you deal with a very competitive person? I'm not a competitive person myself at all. I've tried making compromises, but they don't listen. Oh, this is mm -hmm. about me, because I'm very competitive. You are? Mm -hmm. mm. I'm very competitive. Um. Only in the things I want. See, I'm not the toxic competitive, I'm the positive competitive. Like, I'm Yeah, gonna, like, I feel like I'm competitive too, actually. Yeah. But not too much. Like, I'm not really competitive. Mm -hmm. The only time I'm competitive is when we're playing games and yeah. like, I like winning, like period. That, that, I get sad though, because every time I'm like, I'm gonna win, I never win. Oh. Especially in Just Dance. And I get sad because I'm very competitive. I'm just like, oh, what a win! Then I don't. Loser. Um, but anyways, I don't even want to say I'm a competitive person because I've met real competitive people and it's like you need help. It's like the toxic ones. I'm like, you're doing yeah, too you're much. Yeah, you're doing too much. I'm competitive but at the end of the day. I will still congratulate the winner and be like, yeah, you deserve oh, it. Yeah. You worked hard. We all worked hard. Yeah, I think the best way to deal with competitive people is not to give into it. Like, yeah, don't pay their attention. Yeah, because if if you don't give into their competitiveness, they're literally gonna be competing with themselves. Like, exactly. And then they look stupid. Like, what are you doing? When you're actually comfortable and you know you did great, wouldn't affect you that much yeah you know you did good that's all that matters mm -hmm. let them compete with themselves and honestly in competitions you should honestly be focused more on yourself and pushing yeah. yourself and not so oh my god <laughs> hallelujah focus on yourself do you and if you don't win that's okay keep practicing mm -hmm. focus on the process focus on your system yeah the process mm -hmm. do you say systems mm -hmm. come on atomic habits atomic habits but yeah you just have to focus on yourself because the yeah. people that are the most competitive and especially if you're a freaking sore loser mm -hmm. no one wants to be around you just don't give competitive people attention same with toxic people don't give them attention. So there's this girl in high school that I didn't like. She was really horrible to other students. One day I decided to set her locker on fire. Well, not her locker, but the stuff that was inside. I understand that this might be a crime, but she had it coming her way. Have a good day, mademoiselle. Okay. What did she do so bad that made you set the locker on fire? Yeah. That's my question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then also, how did you not get expelled? Exactly. The subject is this girl is <laughs> on fire. You're petty. But yeah. You um, think that? that Alicia Keys yeah leave it to her leave it shut to up oh that's what I was doing I knew what I was okay. doing <gasps> what do you do if your best friend got with your crush I was thinking of punching her but I'm really not sure babe punch her no beat her ass actually uh, I'm not gonna get any content clues because I don't know who watches your channel <laughs> But I had a friend. Mm, let's talk about you it. You know who you are if you're watching this. And she knew I liked this one boy who was bi. And so she set me up with him. And then I got with him. Then he lied to me and broke my heart. And then tell me why after that she got with him. It's getting weird. I would definitely cut her off. She's done. Don't punch her. Don't fight her because I don't know. I just hate when you fight friends over guys because it's like y'all both look messy. You he probably doesn't care. Like literally, no. just cut her off. Also, it's like there's so many guys in the world. Why do you have to go for your best friend's crush? But also, when it comes to crushes, it really depends on the situation because I don't like when people call dibs on people. What do you mean? Like, let's say we walk into a room or whatever, and there's a guy over there, and we both like him or whatever. But let's say you you saw him first, and you're like, oh, I want him. Mm -hmm. 
then if he comes and talks to me and there's then a I'm gonna look a mess because he, I'm putting dips on him. He didn't even come to me. He could be yes, doing well. like if he comes to me, like there's a mutual attraction there. Mm -hmm. Why are you getting upset about that? Like now mm -hmm. it should be like, okay, now you got him, whatever. It's cool. You know, move on. But let's say like your best friend did not even like him ever. Like you've literally liked him for Alpha a malicious. long time. Mm -hmm. What? What's the, Alpha malicious? That she's the person's Alpha malicious. I, like intake. Yeah, if you've liked him for a very, very long time, she never liked him, mm -hmm. and like it was agreed that you really, really like him, you want to get with him and stuff, and she goes behind your back and does that, mm -mm, done. That's bad, and that's out for malicious intake. Yeah. Intense? Intense. Malicious content. Malicious intent, boy. Jesus. That is it for the confessions. I hope you guys all enjoyed today's video. I sure did. Y'all sent some crazy confessions and the email is still going crazy. Literally at this very moment, I'm still getting emails and confessions. It's scary. Y'all been through it. But I hope you guys all enjoyed today's video. Make sure to check out Xavier's channel. It's gonna yeah. be in the description box. Mm -hmm. And I will see you guys all in my next, ooh. Something just popped up and said my best friend was an op. Wait, this is long. This is an entire YouTube video. We'll read that later. But yeah, I will see you guys all in my next video. I love you and peace.